Hi, I'm Asan. I'm Adir. And I'm Jeremy. And welcome to Paul Academy. Lewis diagrams, also called electron dot diagrams, are used to represent paired and unpaired valence electrons in an atom. For example, the Lewis diagrams for hydrogen, helium, and carbon are as follows. Where the symbol represents the element, in this case hydrogen, helium, and carbon, and the dots represent the electrons in the outer shell, in this case 2, 1, and 4. The Lewis structures are diagrams that show the bonding between atoms of a molecule and the lone pairs of electrons that may exist in the molecule. A Lewis structure can be drawn for any covalently bonded molecule, as well as coordinate compounds. To learn more about covalent and coordinate bonding, please visit our other video on the types of bonding. The atoms in a Lewis structure tend to share electrons so that each atom has eight electrons. This is known as the octet rule. The octet rule states that an atom in a molecule will be stable when there are eight electrons in its outer shell. There are, however, many exceptions which we will touch on later. Lewis structures display the electrons of the outer shell because these are the ones that participate in making chemical bonds. Another reason we use Lewis structures is because they are really, really, really fun to draw. There are six basic steps to drawing Lewis structures, and 25 if you don't know how to count. Step 1. Decide which atoms are bonded together and arrange the atoms on your page to reflect your decision. It helps to first determine a central atom, an atom to which many of the other atoms are bonded. Usually, the central atom is the atom which requires the most bonds to complete its valence octet. Another way to determine the central atom is usually being the least electronegative. Example, silicon in SIF4 or sulfur in SOCl2. Caution, however, this does not always work, especially when hydrogen is involved. Hydrogen is never the central atom. If you are unfamiliar with periodic trends, we highly suggest you watch the video covering that. It may not be as good as this video, but it will work. In this case, phosphorus will be our central atom. Even though phosphorus and hydrogen have the same electronegativity, phosphorus can form the most bonds, thus it's our central atom. Step 2. The second step is to count all the valence electrons. Phosphorus has 5 electrons, while hydrogen has 1. Since there's only 1 phosphorus atom and 3 hydrogen atoms, we can see that that adds up to total 8 valence electrons. This means the structure of pH3 will have 8 valence electrons, or dots, on it. It may be a bit hard to do some simple addition at first, but the more you practice, you'll get the hang of it. Be wary of charges on ions. For example, a plus one ion will have minus one total valence electrons. A minus two negative two charged ion will have plus two valence electrons. Keep that in mind. Step three. Place two electrons, example one pair of electrons, in each bond. Another example of this would be a bonding pair for each bond. In the case of pH 3, we put a pair of electrons in each bond with hydrogen, using 6 out of 8 of our electrons. Moving on to step 4, complete the octets of the atoms attached to the central atom by adding electrons in pairs. In pH 3, we can see that the hydrogen has full octets, thus we do not need to add any more electrons around them. Step 5. Place any remaining electrons on the central atom. So far, we have used six valence electrons out of the eight. The remaining two valence electrons goes around phosphorus to ensure it has a complete octet. Most atoms need complete octets, with nitrogen being the exception, as well as row two elements. Step six. If the central atom does not have an octet, form double bonds. If necessary, form triple bonds. In this case, pH three has a full uh, has a full octet. Thus, more bonds are not necessary. Unfortunately, there are exceptions to the octet rule. Please visit our video on hybridization to see how this happens. The first rule is that the valence shell for hydrogen is completed by only two electrons, as we can see from hydrogen gas. The second rule is the valence shell for lithium and its family members are completed by only two electrons as well. The third rule is the valence shell for beryllium is completed by only four electrons, as we can see from beryllium chloride. The fourth rule is the valence shell for boron is completed by six electrons, as we can see from boron trifluoride. The fifth rule is valence electrons of elements of the third and subsequent rows of the periodic table, 
may absorb enough energy during bonding so that some or all are excited into their own unfilled d orbitals. This means that many more bonds than expected may form, such as phosphorus with f up to 5 bonds and sulfur with up to 6 bonds. We can see this in sulfur hexafluoride. The sixth rule is some atoms, ions, or molecules have orbitals containing a single unpaired electron. These are called pragmatic because the unpaired electrons is and are affected by a magnetic field. Paramagnetic substances have an odd number of valence electrons, so no matter how hard you try, your Lewis structure will always show an unpaired electron. We can see this in nitrogen dioxide. Now let's take a look at the ion SO3-2- because it's a little special. After identifying that sulfur is the center atom, we're going to place three oxygens around it. Finally, we complete the octet around sulfur. Looking at this diagram, we have used all 26 valence electrons as well. However, there's a problem with this structure, and that's the formal charge. Formal charge is used to determine which Lewis structure is preferred. Formal charge is the charge associated to an atom in a molecule or ion, assum assuming that electrons in all chemical bonds are shared equally between atoms, regardless of electronegativity. The Lewis structure with the atoms having a formal charge value closest to zero, or the charge of the ion, is preferred. The steps to determine the formal charge is simple. You take the number of valence electrons in the neutral atom, you subtract the number of electrons in lone pairs, as well as half the number of electrons in covalent bonds. Let's take a look at sulfur. Sulfur has six valence electrons, and in this diagram we can see it has two electrons that are in a lone pair, as well as six electrons that are bonded to other oxygens. So you would take six, you subtract two, and subtract half of six, which is three, to get one. And this is not good, because sulfur uh, should have a formal charge of zero. The solution to this problem is simple. You simply have to double bond one of the oxygens to sulfur. So now, sulfur actually has uh, 10 electrons around it, but that's okay because sulfur is an exception to the octet rule. If you try and calculate the formal charge now, we can see that it's 6 uh, minus 2 minus 8 over 2, which is 4. So 6 minus 2 minus 4 gives us 0. Perfect. Now the formal charge of sulfur is 0. Now we can take a look at the formal charges of oxygen. The double bonded oxygen also has a formal charge of 0. 6 minus 4 minus 4 over 2 gives us 0. But if we take a look at the oxygens that aren't double bonded, the formal charges are actually negative 1. 6 minus 6 minus 2 over 2, which is 1. And there's actually no problem with uh, this Lewis structure because the ion SO3 2 minus has a charge of 2 minus. If you added all the formal charges of sulfur and the three oxygens, you would get negative 2. The formal charge of all the atoms added together needs to be the same as the charge of an ion, or if it's a molecule, it needs to equal 0. However, a new problem arises because we can draw three different Lewis structures for SO3, 2 minus, and they would all have the correct formal charge. So what do we do in this case? Well, we would have to draw resonance structures. The combination of various plausible Lewis structures is called a resonance hybrid. The rules for drawing a resonance structure is simple. The same number of electrons needs to be present for all resonance structures. The octet rule must be obeyed unless this is an exception. And the nuclei, in this case uh, oxygen and sulfur, cannot be rearranged. Only the valence electrons differ for resonance structures. The reason why we draw resonance structures is because we don't actually know which oxygen the double bond is on. After conducting experiments, scientists have found that all three oxygen bonds are the exact same. However, the bond length is longer than a double bond and shorter than a single bond, which means the double bond is distributed. So let's see how we draw resonance structure for SO3 2 minus. You would put a bracket around SO3. You would draw the distribute a double bond in dotted lines, and then at the bottom, under the 2 minus charge, you would write R for resonance. Now, let's talk about bond length and bond order. 
Bond length is the distance between two atoms. The greater number of electrons between the two atoms, the closer the atoms are brought towards one another, therefore the shorter the bond. Let's take a look at the same example, SO3 2 minus. The double bond between sulfur and oxygen is shorter than the single bond between the other sulfur and oxygen. However, thanks to the resonance, we know that all the bonds are actually of equal length. Then, triple bonds having six electrons between atoms are even shorter than double bonds. Now, let's talk about bond order. Bond order is the number of bonding pairs of electrons between two atoms. A single bond has a bond order of one, a double bond has a bond order of two, and a triple bond has a bond order of three, and so on. So for example, H2 has a single bond between the two H's, therefore the bond order is said to be one. However, for polyatomic molecules, it's a bit different. Let's take a look at NO3 minus, for example. NO3- has a central uh, atom of nitrogen bonded to three other oxygens, one of which is a double bond. So the total number of bonds is a double bond, two, and two single bonds, which gives us a total of four. Then you count the number of bond groups between individual atoms. In this case, there's three, one for each oxygen. Then you divide the number of bonds between individual atoms by the total number of bonds. So four over three gives us a bond order of 1.33. This is higher than a single bond, which only has a bond order of one, which means that the bonds in NO3 minus are shorter than a single bond, yet longer than a double bond. Now, let's do one more example to make sure you truly understand how to draw Lewis structures. CH2O is more commonly known as formaldehyde. Formaldehyde has many uses, including uses in medicine. An aqueous solution of formaldehyde can be useful as a disinfectant as it kills most bacteria and fungi, including their spores. Formaldehyde solutions are applied typically in medicine to dry the skin, such as in the treatment of warts. Now, let's draw the Lewis structure. In the first step, we must first identify the central atom. In this case, carbon can make the most bonds even though oxygen is the most electronegative. This means that we will use carbon as our central atom. Next, we will count the amount of valence electrons in this structure. Carbon brings four valence electrons, the two hydrogens each bring one, totaling two valence electrons, and oxygen brings six valence electrons, totaling 12 valence electrons overall that will be in our Lewis structure. In the third step, we will place two electrons in each bond with carbon and oxygen, as well as with carbon and hydrogen. In the fourth step, we will complete the octets of the attached atoms. To do this, we will add six electrons to the oxygen atom to complete its octet of eight electrons, and none to the hydrogen atoms, as it has a full octet from the two electrons in the bond with carbon. In the fifth step, we will have used all the 12 electrons at the moment. Thus, we cannot place any more electrons around the central atom, carbon, to complete its octet. In the sixth step, we must now complete carbon's octet. Since carbon does not yet have a full octet, and only six electrons on its valence shell, two from each hydrogen atom and two from the oxygen atom, we must form a double bond to complete it. The only atom with extra electrons to create a double bond is oxygen. Thus, we will create a double bond with carbon and oxygen in order to create a full octet for carbon. And congratulations, you have completed your very first Lewis structure. Here, here's a cookie. I'm sure that Miss Paul would be very, very, very proud of you. Thanks for watching. Today we've learned how to draw Lewis diagrams, why we even bother to learn them. We also learned about bond order and formal charge, and how to decide which is the best Lewis structure for a compound. And how to draw a resonance structure when there are more than one possible Lewis diagram. Tune in for the next episode.